Hello, this is Purple Rosa and I am continuing on in Elsewhere. I am still in Ashen Scar and it is up to me and Vistari to put a stop to this Khajiit Lich that we found out that is trying to escape the realm he is trapped in. So let's continue. The Khajiit spirit called Arum Kal, the Dark Adept and the Ancient Defiler. Could Arum Kal's fate and the fate of the Hidden Moon Adepts be intertwined? The Hidden Moon Adepts? The former residents of the Hidden Moon Temple. They vanished centuries ago, but the ruins of their sanctuary remain. If they manage to seal a lich like Arum Kal away, they clearly possess skills and techniques we can use. Do you think their knowledge remains? Yes, probably. Memories run deep in places like this, and where there are memories, there are spirits. Helpful ones, I hope. With any luck, one of them will answer our questions. Now, it's a long climb to the temple summit. Are you prepared? Yes, I'm ready to investigate the temple. I'm going to take a moment to make sure we didn't miss anything here. I'll meet you at the temple summit soon, unless you needed something. What makes Arun Kar more dangerous than other liches? Well, for starters, he's more than just a lich. He is also a Dromathra. A Dromathra? Yes, sticks in the throat a bit, doesn't it? Dromathra means something like dark spirit in the Khajiiti tongue. But I think that definition falls woefully short of describing them accurately. What are they exactly? Something unique. Some mages believe they're Daedra, who serve the Dark Prince Namira. Others contend that the Dromathra are just mortal Khajiiti souls held in her thrall. Neither definition sounds right to me. No. But what do you mean? There are things about Khajiiti souls that even I, a master of soul conjuring, don't understand. For instance, only Khajiit can become Dromathra. This indicates there's some hidden capacity or dreadful flaw unique to the race. A duality. A duality? Yes, a tension between two opposing natures. A choice of some kind that no other race has to make. It's a fascinating puzzle. If we survive this, and that is a significant if, I intend to give it my undivided attention. Interesting. Can you tell me more about liches? Lichdom is a state of being, the most sophisticated form of undeath. While lesser necromancers busy themselves with other people's souls, liches turn inward, manipulating their own soul to gain power and extend their life. How does it work? This is just academic curiosity, right? Because I can't overstate the risks. To become a lich, the necromancer must press their soul through an arcane vessel called a phylactery. This requires a lifetime of study, mind you, and fierce power of will. Yeah. I don't want to be a lich anyway. How does that make the mage more powerful? Souls contain tremendous power, but they place certain checks on mortal will. Divesting the two, soul and mortal form, removes these boundaries. The effect is a virtually limitless magical horizon. The process extracts a heavy toll, of course. What's that? Traveling through the phylactery can tear a lich's psyche apart, resulting in madness. Long separation from one's soul can lead to apathy and megalomania as well. In almost all cases, lichdom becomes a curse in very short order. Do you know any liches? A few. We should get back to the task at hand. Ooh. Can you tell me more about this Temple of the Hidden Moon? I know little more than what I've already told you. I can guess its age from the state of the masonry and the religious motifs, I suppose. Early first era, perhaps. The Hidden Moon Adepts venerated Azura above other deities. That much is clear. Do you know the significance of the name the Hidden Moon? Well, modern Khajiiti teachings claim a third moon appears in the sky to usher in the birth of a new Mane, the spiritual leader of the Khajiit. Perhaps there was a time when it meant something else. Huh. 
something related to Azura? That would make sense. My lady carries a single moon in her right hand, and legends speak of her parting the Tamrielic moons, Massa and Secunda, with a whisper. Stands to reason that she might hold dominion over this third hidden moon, too. Yeah. Interesting. So she knows some liches. But she hasn't undergone the process herself. So... Where do I go? Up there. So where am I? Up here. There's got to be a way up there though. Maybe that way? We'll try this way. Probably up here I think. Yeah, that's right. So this Dromathra is a lich as well. And she said only Khajiit can become Dromathra. And she plans to study... Why? that is after this so maybe we'll meet her again in the future that would be cool if we did oh wow look at that door it's really pretty and the view from up here is cool let's go in oh I can't uh, travel to the temple summit. Not sure how to get up there though. Because I can't go in here. Maybe if we continue around this way? No, I don't think that's right either. So I'll try and go this way because I think I can get up there. Yeah. We'll find our way to the top. So yeah, someone's been camping here. I guess I'm going the right way now? Yeah, looks like it because there's a way up over there. Such a nice view from up here. Of the temple. So yeah, we found the correct path up to the temple. Really high up now. Here we go, we've reached the summit. Ah, oh, look at it. Ah, you've arrived. I sense there's a great deal to uncover here yes it's as i thought spirits cling to practically every stone up here some more sociable than others one in particular it feels welcoming but old wary have a look around with any luck at least one of these entities will present itself will do 
Tale of Three Moons In a time before our people's first memory, but long after Azura's pyre claimed the flesh of the proud lion Lorcage, our great mother wept and sighed, haunted by the fate of her brother's dark heart. As she prowled the hills and valleys of her wide domain, she could not escape the pounding, the fate but constant drumbeat from across the churning seas. Somewhere in the great darkness, the fell rhythm of the moon beast quickened and grew stronger. Knowing that her children of many shapes would fall to the moon beast's profanity, she purred across the stars, coaxing the lanterns of Joan and Joe to make way for a sky guardian. This third moon and shield of the latter shone its light down upon Azura's little of purest heart and most fervent obedience. She called these cats the Lissa of the Hidden Moon and taught them the lunar byways and secrets of the Merciful Blade. From that time on they loved her as no other Khajiit could love her and in that love found sympathy for all cats bent by the beating of the heart. Beloved adepts, take these words into your heart and know that we keep Azura's commandments still for we are all children of the hidden moon. Hmm, some kind of Khajiiti children's tale? <laughs> you know better than that, witch of Azura. Greetings, spirit. We've come in good faith. Very well. Who is this youth who travels with you, I wonder? Come, child. Let all the Maza Miri have a look at you. It's a spirit of an Alfik. Trespass or a pilgrim? <laughs> Both, I think. But you walk this path aimlessly, child. I am Mazamiri, clan mother of the Hidden Moon. Why are you here, I wonder? Vastari and I are trying to stop our room car. We need information. <laughs> Too late for that. Our wards flicker and fade. My children all lie dead. No one and nothing remains to stop Arunkal. We failed. I failed. Even if a champion emerged to wield the Moonlight Blade, the hour is too late. Me and Vistari are here. We'll stop him. The Moonlight Blade? Azura's Sword of the Faithful. Oof, you know nothing of our ways, child. Even so, I see strength in you, and great deeds in your wake. Hm. Read the stones that still stand here. We will see if your mind and spirit are as keen as your blades. May I ask you some questions? How would you know what to ask? You know nothing. Just read the stones, child. The only people more impatient than the very young are the very old. And Mazamiri is very old indeed. Deeds now, questions later. Okay. You know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> well, we did come here for a history lesson. We'd best do what she says for now. Is this Alfig really a spirit? She seems like flesh and blood to me. Huh? Surely you've been in the adventuring business long enough to know that looks can be deceiving? I don't understand her precise nature. Not yet, anyway. But she's flush with spiritual power. Don't take her for granted. True, but... I've never seen a spirit look like it's, as I said, fleshy. <laughs> Most spirits are either bluish see-through or yellowish see-through. So I'm going to see these tablets. Stone of Banishment. The path to atonement often gives way to enroaching shadows of rage and self-pity. It lifts back upon itself relentlessly, driving the penitent to face the enormity of their sins again and again. In time, the tortured Jormathra may accept the truth and seek redemption through service to our order, but many resist. For these pitiable creatures, banishment is our only recourse. Through prayer, song, and slashing blades, we keep safe 
The roads between worlds. We find great honour in this work, but great danger also. Never forget that Namira craves the hunter's heart above all others. An adept must find the seed of peace that hides within the bitter fruit of war. So the adepts acted as soul shepherds? Ushering true souls to paradise and bent souls to this great darkness. Hmm, quite a task. Yeah. Stone of Commitment. Of all Azura's many commandments, one leaps above all others. All souls, great and small, true and bent. Moons blessed and curse ridden must return to her embrace. Beyond the lunar lattice that divides a life of flesh from a life of spirit. In this commandment, the order of the hidden moon finds its vocation. Beloved adepts, we must walk a shepherd's path. Through prayer and song, we must usher the people's souls to their appointed place at the left hand of our queen and mother. In saving others, so too do we save ourselves. Huh. So, the adepts charged themselves with defending the liminal border between this world and oblivion, the lunar lattice, as they saw it. Gatekeepers of a sort. Intriguing. I wonder if uh, Vastari here will get this temple up and running again. It is interesting. I know she's not a Khajiit, but she's a follower of Azura. Stone of Atonement. What deeper grief can a Khajiit suffer than witnessing a true cat's fall to Namira? Watching the shining faces of brothers and sisters suddenly struck black as midnight, creased with snarls of rage and sorrow, a people cursed the Dramathra. But let us never forget that every dancing thrall of Namira was once a pure child of Zura and an inheritor of the Jaka J. No Khajiit is beyond redemption. By pressing the Dramatha souls into the bones of our fallen kin, we give them an opportunity for atonement. For the peace found only in twilight, so pay no heed to those who shrink from our call to the dark. No price is too great for a soul made clean. I see. The Hidden Moon Adepts practice the form of necromancy here, pressing the souls of their corrupted kin into service so that they might be redeemed. Fascinating. Yeah, it is. So, Khajiit become Dramathra when they're seduced by Namira. Come now, Wanderer. If you are not afraid, I have more to show you. Yes? Do you see now, child? We servants of the Hidden Moon protected and guided the people's souls, both true souls and bent, guardians and redeemers. Now, all that remains of our order are old stones and old spirits. Spirits like me. So what went wrong? Azura's twilight path, the path to love and redemption, is fraught with perils and temptations. I thought I prepared our adepts to face the darkness without falling to it. I failed. Arum Kal is the result. If you know this much about Arum Kal, you can help me stop him. Ah. <sighs> How easy you make it sound. You may know that the dust storm will tear down your house, but knowledge alone will not beat back the wind. A wise corpse is no less dead. Come, Mazamiri will teach you one last lesson. Yes? Oh, let's go. You're not coming, Vastari? I think we can trust this Mother Mary. Do as she asks and learn what you can. I'm going to head back to the tomb where you destroyed the phylactery. I can't shake the feeling that we missed something. We'll meet again soon. Azura guide you. And you. Stone of 
so listen to her tale. Now for the story no teaching stone can tell. Varun Kaur served our order for many years as our greatest champion. But as his power grew, so did his pride. In time, he renounced his faith in Azura and turned to the dark path, the way of the Dromatra. Many adepts fell under his sway, and the order collapsed into civil war. The battle sundered the temple and blighted the canyon below. We triumphed in the end, but Arum Kor would not die. He fled, seeking refuge in one of his orbs. Ooh. We locked the orbs away, but now our wards grow brittle, and Arum Kor prepares to emerge once again. Only a warrior of the Hidden Moon can end this. And only with the powers of the Moonlight Blade. Huh. Make no mistake, child. Arum calls power and hatred have only grown since we first locked him away. The remnants of our order spent their waning years looking for a way to destroy him permanently. We found one, but it carries great risk. I'm up for it. This Moonlight Blade, right? What is it? It is more than a blade. It is a gateway, a path, a key, a sacred tool of our order, given to us by Azura herself. Perhaps you can bear this weapon's weight. Perhaps not. This calls for another test, I think. What sort of test? Only a handful of adepts have ever held the Moonlight Blade, and each of them possessed a wheel of iron. I need to know your quality. I will conjure dark spirits in the next chamber. Banish them without falling yourself, and the blade is yours. I still have some questions, Mazamiri. <laughs> I would worry if you didn't. Well, go on. Ask your questions, child. So the Hidden Moon Adepts practice necromancy. Hmm. Only the very crude would call it necromancy. Yes, we reanimated the skeletons of fallen Khajiit, but always as a path to redemption. The Dromatra who possessed those bones did so to earn their way back to paradise. Interesting. Earn their way how? By fighting for their true spirited kin. Victory illuminated the soul and loosened Namira's hold on them. When the noise of the dark faded, even for an instant, they would remember who they were. Then we sent them home. To the crossing. To the crossing? What is that? On the edge of eternity, Azura watches over the gates of the crossing behind the Lunar Lapis. It is a twilight realm where death's tide reaches the afterlife shore. Khajiit must pass through it before they reach what waits beyond. Tell me more about the Moonlight Blade. As I said before, it is a gift from our mother, Azura, and the greatest treasure of our order. Those who learn the Moon Knight Blade's discipline can cut through the boundaries between worlds and usher souls from one realm to another. Why didn't you use it against Aram Karl the first time? We did, but despite the sword's power, Arum Karl escaped to a place where we could not follow. The adepts who survived our war with the Lich made great sacrifices to further empower the blade. But by the time we were done, none remained to wield it. Is his escape related to those orbs, the phylacteries? Yes, it is. He twisted our powers to create something profane. We must use our powers to destroy it. You said you knew Arum Kaur. What happened to him? How was he corrupted? Arum Kaur was one of my greatest pupils. Strong. Very strong. 
and sharp as Boethra's tongue. Like you, he asked endless questions. Why, Mazamiri, why? Why, why, why? Why what? Why do we not aid more Dromathra? Why fear Namira if we bear Azura's blade? Why do we fear at all? My answers never satisfied him. He was fiercely loyal to Azura, but resentful too. Impatient and powerful enough to doubt our warnings. What pushed him over the edge? When the time came to select a new steward of the Moonlight Blade, Azura chose another to wield it. Shandori, his friend and rival. Arun Khan grew furious. He cursed Azura and swore revenge on the mother who spurned him. That's when he became a lich? Soon after, yes. He whispered lies to his fellow adepts, convinced them that Azura treated us as slaves and worse. Then came the battle. We did not realize what the room call had become when the fighting started. Now we know. Interesting. Power does not interest me though, so... No way I'll end up like him. <laughs> so I gotta pass her test. So I can get the main blade. Child, well done. Come, the sword is just ahead. Cool. Behold, child, Shandori, guardian of the Moonlight Blade. Know that if you take the sword, you take an oath to destroy Arum Call as well. I will. It's my sworn duty, at least for now. Oh, it's like a. A scythe. Mazamiri. Oh. So, the fateful moment is upon us. It is, Shando. It is good to see Shando again. Speak with him, child. I am certain he has things to tell you. Hmm. So... Mazamiri's champion arrives at last. Then the battle is upon us. Azura be praised. I am Shandori of the Hidden Moon. Together, we will destroy the dark spirit of Arumkal. Together, I thought I only needed this weapon. The blade and I are one. Long ago, I turned away from the sands behind the stars. From paradise and asked Azura to let me reside within this sword instead. Here I will stay until Arumkal has hissed his last. Then let's finish this. Patience. The blade has rested here for too long. My connection to Azura and the Lunar Lattice feels faint, weak. We cannot face Arumkal until we restore the sword to its former strength. Huh. I might know someone who can help. I'll find a way to restore the blade. We should seek out this sword mender as soon as possible. Arum Kal has spent centuries plotting this escape. If he regains his full strength, even the powers of the Moonlight Blade may fall short. So you and Mazamiri know each other? Yes. It does my heart good to see her again. She was my teacher. And after Arum Kal betrayed us, she became a dear friend as well. Has she just been waiting all this time like you? Mazamiri swore to safeguard the blade and the temple for as long as necessary. As always, 
She was true to her word. What's the story behind this moonlight blade? An ancient gift from our patron Azura. We prayed over it under the lantern light of Joan and Jode for six months before channeling my soul into it. The blade will not fail us. You have my word. Mother Mary said it will help us defeat Arum Karl. How exactly? It exists here on Nyrni, but not only here. I would say more, but simply describing the blade's power does it no justice. Restore the sword, champion. By the grace of Azura, all will become clear soon. What is your relationship to Azura anyway? <sighs> Dark Moons, has the faith truly withered that much? Azura is the mother of all Khajiit. She lifted us up and bound us to the lunar lattice. Hers is the gift of Jakaje, the eternal, unified spirit of our people, and all our perfect forms. And your order was devoted to her in particular? Yes. Azura charged us with safeguarding lost souls and bringing them back to her embrace. Every soul of the Jakaje is sacred. I served her in life, I serve her still in death, and I will serve her in any life that is yet to come. Can you tell me more about yourself? Hmm. Speaking about oneself is an act of vanity. I prefer to let my actions speak for me. Yeah. But I need to know more about the person I'm working with. As you wish. In life... I serve the Order as a defender of the Lattice and steward of the Moonlight Blade. Any dark creature that crept into this world fell by my hand. Arum Kal fought at my side for many years, but I failed to see the dark in him. What were the signs you missed? Missed? Or chose not to see? Banishing spirits brought him too much joy. A hidden moon adept's true calling lies in charity, humility, forgiveness. Our dominion over Kajiti souls made us guides and confessors. Violence was always a last resort. Did you ever try to forgive and redeem Arum Kal? <sighs> Arum Kal was my brother. I tried to... He would not see reason. He does not seek forgiveness or redemption. He thirsts for power and death and must be destroyed. On this subject, I will say no more. Okay. So, now that we have the moon blade, we have to restore Brave it. Brave Shandori will guide you now, child. But do not fear. Old Mazamiri will be watching. And now we have to take it to Vastari for her to repair. But I'm going to end this one here and we will continue this on in the next one. I will see you around. Thanks for watching.